What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Weld.com. So as you know, periodically we get uh, requests from viewers such as yourselves to do specific videos. I uh, have that right here with me. Uh, Mr. Jason Pope asked, I just wanted to know where to start studying for my CWI. I have the tools in the 2020 D11 book. What are my next steps? What books or other resources should I grab? I plan on going to school for the cert, but I want to be as prepared as possible. Thank you for your videos. Well, sir, it's your lucky day. I just happened to have some of my old study material in the shop. Here's to you, Mr. Pope. Coke reflexes once it, once it hits your lips. Jason, head on over to aws.org. I'm sure you're familiar with the website by now. If you want to prepare for your CWI and stack the deck in your favor and get as prepared as possible, before you even step foot in that class, there are some things you should know. Now, I don't know exactly how long you've been welding. The first thing you want to check is find out if you're eligible to become a CWI. No, you do not have to have a welding background or welding hands-on welding experience to become a CWI. In my opinion, it helps. Uh, it helped me with when I took the exam. Once you find out if you qualify, I spoke with Nate Bowman the other day. I'm planning on going to get my certified welding supervisor's endorsement. He told me to start studying for a year prior to going to class. I recommend you do the same thing because there's quite a bit of information you're gonna wanna digest before getting into this. So if you head on over to the AWS uh, website, aws.org, there is a list of resources that you can download for free. And uh, here's a quick little not really a secret because they tell you about it. There's information and questions that are gonna be pulled from these reference materials that you should know. That's gonna be in your part A. So part A is your general knowledge. Uh, 150 questions, closed book. You just have to go off what you have here in the old noodle. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to the website. They're gonna list out some of these resources and they're free to download. So we have the AWS QC1 standard for AWS certification of welding inspectors. That's all the information you need to know to become a certified welding inspector. There are test questions um, that are gonna be pulled from this booklet here. So you're gonna wanna read this. It's, uh, it's a quick read, you should be able to knock it out. 12 pages, it's a whopper. Uh, this one's not too bad, but you wanna be familiar with the information that's inside of this book. In addition to that, um, something every welder and inspector should be familiar with is the ANSI Z49.1 safety and welding cutting and allied processes through the AWS. Once again, another free download. I think this one's about 79 pages. Let's just take a gander, shall we? Oh, I was wrong. 58 pages, so not bad. There are welding safety questions that will be on the exam. So make sure you read this in its entirety. Uh, next up, we have the AWS B5.1. Again, these are all free resources for download. You don't have to print them off like we did, uh, but you can download these through the AWS. Um, but there's a lot of good information in this that you're going to want to know. Questions will be pulled from this. Again, they will be addressed in part A and parts of parts, uh, some parts of part B of the test. Depending on where you go to take your CWI examination, uh, if you go to uh, a CWI seminar, you will receive the WIT book, Weld Inspection Technology book, as well as the workbook that goes along with it. I highly recommend maybe getting advanced copies of this. If you know a CWI, that has these books, see if you can borrow them from that individual and go through. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Testing procedures, the different types of tests that are gonna be conducted. Uh, there's some welding symbols information in here. What you don't wanna do is walk into your one week or two week course and have absolutely no idea about the various types of welding inspection that there are as far as mag particle, x-ray, visual inspection, all these different methods of inspection. You don't want to walk in there and not know that information. You at least want to be familiar with it. So make sure to go through these books. What I would recommend is maybe grab the print offs, the PDFs. Uh, I put them in a little binder and I just studied those three booklets for a couple of weeks till I was very confident with the information that I had in there. And then I started migrating into these guys right here. Now these are not free resources. I, I would recommend reaching out to somebody. Um, I actually got these by going to section meetings and participating in AWS events. They have contests, you can win these books, you can purchase these books if you'd like to, but this is the AWS A2.4 standard symbols for welding, brazing, and non-destructive examination. Now we have done uh, some videos on this. We did a three-part series, I believe, cameraman, three-part series? He's nodding his head in agreement. for 
welding symbols. So get familiar with welding symbols because there are a lot of questions on part A in reference to the welding symbols guide. So make sure you're up to snuff on all your fillet welds, groove welds, butt welds, um, sizes, where everything is laid out on a standard welding symbol. Know the difference between a weld symbol and a welding symbol. Standard terms and definitions. So once you start working towards your CWI, gone are the days of stick, TIG, MIG, and flux core. We're gonna start referring to those as shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, submerged arc welding, uh, all those processes. So try to get rid of the slang terms uh, that you know a lot of the things by. Start learning the actual standard terms and definitions through AWS because there is, they're not gonna ask you in slang terms or industry related terms what the what the definitions are once again this is going to be general knowledge type information a lot of the stuff you're going to find in the code book uh, you're going to have to know the standard terms and definitions for what they're asking for next up you already said you have the d11 uh, 2020 edition i have not purchased mine yet i have the 2015 edition all i want for christmas is an aws d1.1 2020 edition so santa if you're listening all I want, man. Hook a brother up. I highly recommend going what your background is. So depending on if you're more familiar with API, if you've done a lot of pipeline stuff, if that's your shtick, um, go with that. Or if D11 is kind of like your bread and butter, you're more familiar with structural applications, go with the area that you're more familiar with. Don't go with uh, API because it is a, a thinner book because this exam uh, is just as if not or it's just as hard if not more difficult than the d11 book but if you're not familiar with uh with api don't go that route if you're more familiar with the structural you know kind of pick and choose what your strong suit is once you get you your cwi you'll be able to operate uh out of any of the books because at that point they'll they will know that you know how to navigate the code books and interpret them correctly i highly recommend reading the entire book right yeah it sucks there's there's a lot of pages in this thing. So if you go through here, there's 500 some odd pages of the 2020 code book. There's probably a couple extra than what I have here. But what I've done is I just labeled my code book. I would not label yours until you get into class because your instructor is gonna possibly show you how to label and tab your book. Um, I kind of did mine a little bit different as to, I just put the, the clauses on one side and then the figures on the bottom. And I just made it very easy. Um, there's, there's a bunch of people who will have tabs all up and down the book. You kind of get lost in that. They've got so much highlighting going on there. The entire book is neon. Uh, just be careful what you're putting in there, what you're highlighting, what you think is important, may not be important come test day. So wait till you get into class to start highlighting stuff. But one thing I recommend is go through each of the clauses, read that entire clause. So maybe dedicate, if, uh, you know, if you're gonna go ahead and, and wait a year to take that exam, go ahead and just read one clause a week. Get familiar with where everything is. Uh, because once test day comes, you should be able to read the question and understand what part of the code book that's coming from, be able to flip to that specific part of the code book and find that answer. You don't wanna be one of those guys that uh, just goes to the, the, the index back here and kind of finds the key word in the question and figure out where, what page number that's on and flip to that page, you should already know relatively what clause and what area you need to go to to find that information. So being able to navigate your code book um, is going to be a big plus. So that's part C. For you API fellows, I highly recommend the same thing. Read this code book in its entirety. Be very familiar with it. You have a lot less reading to do, um, but still nonetheless, open this book up, read through it in its entirety. That way, once you go into the class, um, you kind of have the, the deck stacked in your favor. Uh, for you API fellows, there's an API study guide that's available. This is the AWS API-M 2008 edition. It's a study guide for the API 2000, or, uh, 1104. Highly recommend picking that up, reading through it. There's some sample questions in here uh, that, that's gonna help prepare you for the exam. Once all that's done, so you're familiar with your, your part A, uh, which is your general knowledge, general information, part C, which is all your code book stuff. Um, go ahead and print this off. This is also available on AWS. And this changes periodically. This is the 2017 edition 
Um, the, this is where your part B, your, your practical is going to come from, all your measuring stuff. But this is the book of specs. So what this is, is a fictitious code book. So you can't rely on any prior knowledge that you have. So if you know maximum weld reinforcement at a D11 for limited thickness plate is 1 8 of an inch, don't rely on that previous knowledge in your part B section. Part B is a fictitious code book. Do not apply anything in part B into real weld inspection as far as the numbers that they give you. This is a combination of AWS D1.1, American Petroleum Institute 1104, and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Section 9. So it's actually three code books wrapped up into one. Get very familiar with this. Uh, don't memorize anything, but understand how this is navigated. Uh, Again, when you take your Part B, don't go off any prior knowledge that you have to the code book because it's a fictitious code book and it's constantly changing. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Study your terms, definitions, get a copy of the WIT book. Um, I'll tell you what, Jason Pope, I have your email address. Email Mr. Todd over here at weld.com just like you did a video request before and I will send you my weld inspection technologies, my WIT book, and the study guide so you can get a jump start on your career as a certified welding inspector. So I will send this out to you. I'll even send these printed, uh, printed pieces off and a standard welding terms and definitions book. So WIT book, the workbook, standard terms and definitions. Hell, I'll even throw in the welding symbols. We got enough money in shipping, right? We can ship this to them. I'll send you the stack, right? Send me your email. <clears throat> or sorry, send me your address. I'll send that off to you. But for, like I said, one year I would go through and study all of this material, understand where everything's at, get familiar with it. If you have or know other CWIs in your inner circle, talk to them, find out what other steps you can do to prepare. Check back with AWS. They have some great online uh, tutorials and online resources for preparing to take the CWI, the fundamentals of welding, the metallurgy, uh, welding symbols, welding math, you're gonna wanna know all that stuff. Get very good converting your fractions to decimals because everything in the, uh, the exam, you could be in fractions, you could be in decimals, a lot of that stuff you have to do some, some math to find cross-sectional area and all that stuff. So get familiar with the formulas that are gonna be in these books. Any formula that's in there, I would go ahead and study those. So. That's pretty much all I have. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything I can help you out with, go ahead and drop it down there in the comment section. If any of the viewers have any, uh, any other video requests that you would like to do, go ahead and submit it. Sorry, I can't give away uh, study material to everybody, but um, go ahead and submit that in there and we'll try to take care of your video as soon as possible. We appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and, and subscribe. And until next time, make every well better than your last. Very nice of you. You like that?